Hello everybody! Um, welcome back to my land, or my father's land, my father-in-law's land. You can see we're making it kids friendly. I got a little, you know, uh, swing here for the kids. They're enjoying it a lot. And I've been coming here with a few friends now. Um, one of them is filming this right now. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> You're um, welcome. And uh, these are a few of the trees I'm planting. This is a Japanese dogwood. Um, and these are pomegranate trees, two pomegranate trees that I'm going to be planting today or later this month. And basically the unit for the fruit forest is a fruit tree surrounded by companion plants. And you can see here uh, the first one I did last week with, uh, with Duncan, another friend of mine. And uh, so we surrounded this one just to give it some shade because this is a pawpaw tree, tree. This is a NC1 pawpaw tree. Um, and I hear they need shade and I don't want uh, you know, animals to come and grazing on it so I protected it a bit. Deers, not much a problem here but boars. But if a boar wants to eat this, it's going to eat it, but we'll see. And I've got a few companion plants here. I've got elderflower, elderberries. I've got, uh, or the plants I got from the forest here, these are Fuyuichigo, like uh, winter strawberries. I got blackcurrant. I got yarrow. I'm going to use the yarrow to produce leaf mulch, chop and drop. And I've got lupine here. Lupine, which is a very good nitrogen fixer for the soil. And it's beautiful. Um, and more strawberry. Um, wild strawberry, winter strawberries over there. Now this is kind of one unit if you want and I'm gonna put more plants in here as time goes along but this is the start. This is officially the beginning of the fruit forest and I've uh, dug a hole here a meter square. We took out so many freaking bamboo roots big like this, long like this with an axe and shovels and that's about two hours of work right here and um, Mix the soil so it's loose, put some soil from the forest. I took some humus from the forest so it can inoculate it with some fungus in there. Um, put some charcoal also in the, in the mix and uh, some compost I've been uh, doing uh, at work and at home for the last year. Some a good dose of organic compo uh, compost on top of it and then cover everything up with this is coconut tree mulch. So this is tree bark, bark uh, mulch on top of it to of course um, Try to slow down, not prevent, but slow down weeds, keep humidity, water, protect from the sun, and all of this. So this is one unit with a pawpaw tree. I'm going to show you the, the other ones we have over here. I've started planting them in the part where there's the most sun on my land, which is here. Uh, this here is a Japanese dogwood that I've planted here. Same pattern, of course. More yarrow over here lupine for nitrogen and here I've got a blueberry, a regular blueberry bush uh, all by itself so I should find a friend for it actually um, and this is the Japanese dogwood which makes small fruits you, a bit like small peaches you can use for uh, jam and stuff and the bark apparently is medicinal so I don't know how exactly but uh, I've read and heard it's medicinal so that's why one of the reasons I chose it Japanese dogwood um, this here is a present I got for my father-in-law. He said, hey, happy birthday, Bart. And uh, he got, uh, I forgot the name, Klata <laughs> Veratani. And uh, you can eat these straight up. Yeah, very good. It's a bit close though. Papa helped me a lot. Thanks, Papa. But I'll probably have to move it eventually. It's a bit close. I want to keep a distance of about four meters between these ones. Because there's another unit here. And this is another pawpaw tree. This is a sunflower uh, variety. The other one is NC1. This is sunflower. Um, surrounded by blackcurrant, yarrow, parsley. We'll see what happened with parsley, you know. Just having fun here. Um, and this here is uh, elderflower, elderberries, and um, lupine. As you can see, I don't know the companion plant, the distancing and stuff. I'm going to learn as it goes along, you know, what happens. and. How big do they get and do I need to move them or whatever and shade? I'm learning. I'm learning. This is another present from my dad, an almond tree. Almonds! Um, they need a lot of water and they get very big, so I don't know if it's the best. But hey, I'm not going to say no to an almond tree. We'll see what happens. Might need to be moved a bit too later on. Now here we've got... Two of my favorite trees I've been looking for, the Gumi tree, Eleagnus multiflora, variety gigantis, 
they're big berries, big gumi berries. So this is the tree, the gumi berry tree. And it's surrounded, we don't see very well, but surrounding it, I've got three wild Japanese strawberries, Natsuhaze. Um, they're a variety of woodland Japanese blueberries. Uh, so that's a command, companion plant for now. I'll put more later, of course. And that's one unit here. And because the gumi tree is smaller, I put the other one two meters away. And it's over here. So that's another gumi tree that I got from a very good tree nursery, Kinkaen uh, Nursery in Kurume. Very cool guy, Tomonori! And um, two wild Japanese blueberries here, Natsuhaze as well. Um, yeah, so the fruit forest has officially started. Woohoo!